I'm going to make a video to kind of say goodbye to a phase in my life and um, it's kind of interesting because these last couple of weeks I've really been trying to enjoy every last moment because I know it's the, the we're leading up to the last day that I'm going to be single and um, I had a lot of fun times. I, I kind of took them for granted because up until very recently I just assumed that would be the, the, the kind of life I would live for, for the rest of my life and um, it hasn't uh, it never dawned on me that it might not be that way. So because I love everything that I'm involved in as a single guy that I won't be able to do once I get married. Uh, when I was seven years old, uh, my dad gave me a book about um, programming in QBasic. QBasic was a, kind of a Windows version of the basic language. And the very first program I wrote, and later this year I'm going to be celebrating the 25th anniversary since I first started programming on the computer. The very first computer program I wrote was to try to add up all of the integers from 1 to 100 because I knew what the answer was. So I wanted to see if I could program it correctly. And I ran the program and the computer said zero. And my heart just sank. And I looked more carefully and I realized that I had printed out the wrong variable and I corrected it. And it gave me the right answer, 5,050. And I got so excited, I went to my bedroom and I jumped on the bed and I broke the spring in the mattress. And for many years, I still used that same mattress. And even though it was uncomfortable, it served as a reminder of the accomplishment that I had made. So it was very nice. And then when I was nine years old, I wrote a computer program for Tic-Tac-Toe. And it was just before Christmas and I spent two weeks programming it, but it was a very, uh, very elementary. All it did was brute force all of the, uh, the uh, I basically hard coded all of the possible positions of tic-tac-toe and what the best move was. And um, I showed all my friends who came to our uh, home on Christmas Day. And uh, I just needed something, to, a platform to stand on to talk. You know, I, I, I'm not a very social person. When I, when I go to a party, the first thing that comes out of my mouth is not politics or sports or, or anything like that. I'm just, not a very, I'm just not very into current events. So I always need that personal event that I could brag about. You know, part of the reason I love Ellensburg is that we have very, very little light pollution here. And sometimes I can see a planet or two. Not now, obviously, because of how cloudy it is. But um, you can see... Um, Especially on day one or two of the lunar calendar, or day 28, 29, you can still see the moon from here. You can't really do that over in Seattle. Uh, we, we get like maybe, you, you're lucky if you see maybe three weeks of the moon out of the month of over in Seattle. So um, anyways, um, it, just, it just highlights all the benefits of being single, staying up all night. Um, one time I came out here to view Jupiter in opposition. Jupiter came in opposition. On May 8th of um, 2018 and I came out here to view Jupiter and I had to go to work the day of and the day after that I was racing back and forth and I got back to work and I was I was I was completely out of it it was like going to work drunk and so uh, I, I, I uh, but it, it made a good memory it made a good memory you know obviously you know if, if I have kids to feed I'm not gonna risk my job over Jupiter, I didn't lose my job over it, but I could have, and, uh, and uh, if I had kids, I probably wouldn't do that. So uh, that, that highlights all the benefits of being single and being, being a little bit more malleable. You know, if something happened at that job, I could look for another job. I could look out of the car. Uh, I can't really do that with a wife and kids. Uh, I just like being able to squeeze into every little crevice of life, uh, and uh, I can't really do that once I have a family. Okay, uh, one of my big regrets in life was that I had many years when I had a fear of flying. Uh, when I was 14 years old, we had 9-11, and then I was 15 and my family and I went to Taiwan. I tried to get over the fear of flying, but um, we got to Taiwan and then two days after we arrived in Taiwan, a plane had crashed in Taiwan. Uh, and um, it just reinforced all that fear. And then finally we got back to the United States and um, I went to get therapy for the not only the fear of flying, but other things going on in my life at the same time. And um, I thought I was over it. A couple months later, uh, Columbia was uh, on its way back to uh, Kennedy Space Station and it exploded uh, on re-entry into the atmosphere. 
it just re reinforced my fear of flying. And I didn't want to fly for a long time after that. And uh, for many years, um, I missed out on things. My family would go on vacation to see my grandparents uh, or uh, my, my uncle. He was living in uh, California. And I wouldn't go and I would stay home and I would cause all sorts of trouble because um, I was just really depressed about not uh, being able to fly. And I didn't think I would ever fly again. I remember my mom told me, we had three grandparents that were alive at the time. My mom told me, oh, well, you have to fly at least three more times. And I asked her why. And she said, well, don't you feel it's your obligation to go to your grandparents' funerals? And that just terrified the heck out of me. First of all, I didn't want my grandparents to die, first of all. It, uh, that just re reminds me that they're going to die someday. And second, I don't want to fly. And so that comment just really, really, really shook me. And I remember thinking that someday we're going to have a bridge over the Bering Strait. And I could just drive over that. At the time, I was still learning to drive, but I kind of liked it. And um, I thought, well, I could just drive over the Bering Strait. And um, I, I wanted to visit other places in the world, too. You know, that would give me a chance to see Alaska and Russia. And, uh, well, we lived in Pittsburgh, so that would give me a chance to see most of the U continental U.S. You know, and uh, at the time, I had never spent time in Seattle except for the airport. Um, and uh, that would give me a chance to, to come here. Uh, that would give me a chance to see some of Canada. And um, I, I remember um, thinking, well, the next time I go to Taiwan, it will be in a car over the Bering Strait. And then I got my license and I started driving a lot. Uh, I, I went to, I, I was going to school in Rochester. My family's in Pittsburgh. And um, I remember thinking, hey, you know, in, in just a few months' time, I've driven the equivalent of going over Siberia. You know, I could, I could probably do this one day, especially if the car's going to drive itself and I could just turn it on and sleep in the car. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my grandpa passed away in 2011, and by that time I had gotten over my fear of flying. It was 10 years after 9-11, and um, actually part of the reason I got over my fear of flying is kind of interesting. I, um, when I was in high school, I had gotten rejected by a girl. She was American. And um, at the time, a lot of uh, girls from other places in the world uh, were interested in me. But I thought that because all of my peers were dating American girls, I felt that if I dated an Asian girl, I was kind of taking a compromise. You know, I was, I was 15 years old, and um, I was just not very smart very wise and I just thought oh I'll just go with the crowd that's not a very wise thing to do and so um, sorry about my pointing the angle uh, the angle of the camera I'm just trying to get away from all the noise and to give you guys a little bit of scenery at the same time but um what was I saying oh um, I thought I had to do what all my peers were doing and I thought that if I dated an Asian girl I was taking a compromise. Um, and then, uh, late 2003, uh, I was watching World Idol. This is when Kelly Clarkson was competing against idols from all around the world. And I noticed uh, there were two other girls on the contest. It, may, it opened my eyes that girls from all around the world are interesting, too. And uh, I uh, wanted to go visit some of these girls so and, and go meet some. And so that's part of the reason I got over my fear of flying because I, I actually did have to fly. See, I didn't care about my grandpa's funeral. I cared more about meeting my future wife. And, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's how stubborn I was. Anyways, um, this is going to be the last couple of months or maybe a year of me being single. And what else have I done recently? Oh, I talking about driving. I had a big problem with my driving exam that I took. Uh, I would get so nervous the night before the exam that I wouldn't sleep, and then I would go to the exam and fail. And so I told my dad, oh, don't tell me when the driving exam is. Just wake me up and say, okay, today we're going to, to driving tests. And I did that, and I passed just fine. And I did that with all the big exams in my life, my SAT exam, my GRE exam. Uh, and um, it's kind of funny because nowadays... When I go to the computer game conference in Taiwan and I can't sleep the night before, that's great! My time schedule is completely shifted uh, for Taiwan 
or, or this year it's going to be held in China, I've completely shifted for that. The problem is now I actually want that to happen and it doesn't. I sleep perfectly before the contest because I want to miss sleep. It's kind of funny how my body is always trying to resist what I'm trying to do. But, um, yeah, after I get married, um, the, 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 how I do the contest will probably have to change a little bit. I mean, if my wife is going to go there, if my kids are going to go there, ah, I don't want to think about it. And that's why I'm really starting to, uh, to cry these last few weeks almost. It's kind of interesting. When I was single, I always wanted to have a partner and now vice versa. Uh, anyways, I, 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 I broke up with another girl a few years ago because of she wanted children and um, I wanted to write computer games but uh, this girl that, that I uh, am gonna marry she uh, has a few more years to go before she thinks about children and I do want to have children because I was just thinking um, I need somebody to continue my computer games after I'm gone and I hope one day in the year 5000 AD somebody will continue in my games and we'll go to the it won't be International Computer Game Association anymore. It will be Interstellar Computer Game Association. And I want somebody to go to that conference for me. Thanks for watching.